Hey everyone, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com and today we're getting our pistons ready to put back in the engine. Next up in the White Wookiee series, we are going to be getting our pistons ready to go. Now, we had disassembled our pistons to send them out to get cleaned and coated. What that means is we gotta put them back together. I also wanted to make sure that the ringlands were completely clean and free of carbon. Now, this could be done several ways. Because we're doing this after they have been coated, I don't wanna simply soak them in brake clean or carb cleaner because I'm worried about what that may do to the coating. I wanted to try a couple of methods of cleaning to see which one worked the best. A really common method that I didn't use because I don't have them anymore is using the old piston rings to clean the ring grooves. That works really well. Obviously it fits perfect because, well, it came out of there. And of course you don't have to spend any money to do it. So in this video, I'm gonna test drive using a ring groove cleaning tool, as well as one other method that actually worked way better. It's way cheaper and doesn't risk doing any damage to the piston. Let's go ahead and get started. There's many different ways to clean the grooves in these pistons. These get pretty well carboned up, especially on higher mileage and poorly maintained engines. And we wanna make sure we get all that carbon out. There are several different styles of tool to clean the ring grooves. This is one from Lyle Tools. And essentially what you do is you take and you put this bit in, you, put, you clamp it down, you take the piston and you put it in and then rotate the piston around. I found that this actually works okay. The issue that I ran into is the top groove is actually a little too narrow for the tool. It has the bit that fits it, but it doesn't really fit the tool very well. Not only that, it's kind of a pain in the butt to slide this back and forth. There's a almost a hidden lock tab right here. And then you can change the pressure based on how much tension you either put on it or pull back off of the die piece right here. So what I actually found to be better is to take the die off the tool and just do it by hand. It's gonna take a little bit longer, but I felt like it did a bit better job and I could actually rotate the piston around. This may even be a bit easier if you have the connecting rod attached, but we're gonna do that in the next step. Now, these pistons have been cleaned. They've been ran through a parts cleaner. In addition to that, when they got the coating put on them, they were cleaned as well. So these are actually in pretty good condition, yet there's still a good amount of carbon, especially on this top compression ring and we wanna do our best to get all of that off. Now, if there was not this coating on it, I might consider soaking the piston in carb cleaner to try and get any leftover carbon loosened up, but I don't wanna impact this coating at all, so we're just gonna go ahead and clean it by hand. And I'm also working on a white surface to show you guys just how much carbon comes off of these. So this is cylinder one. What we do is we find the right bit that fits in our ring groove. Obviously, that one's way too big. So this is actually the smallest one. We simply angle the bit. I found angling the bit helps and just rotate the piston and clean the carbon out. Every once in a while you wanna pull the tool out and tap and you can see this little pile of carbon here. It's not too much, but you don't want it building up and getting in the way of moving the tool through. Let's move to the second. And then we'll do the oil control ring. I have to grab the other, the other bit here for this one. This one doesn't actually have one that fits very well. The one that fits is a bit loose. So we're gonna go ahead and use that one. This is a considerably bigger groove, so it's a bit easier to clean. I'm just barely scraping the surface. We're not trying to remove metal. We're trying just to get any loose carbon. And then what we'll do is we'll blow these out with an air gun to make sure we don't have any pieces left over in here. So you can see, not a lot, but enough to make it worth doing. This is cylinder two, I have yet to touch it at all. Let's try the zip tie method and see if, see if this works any better. Actually, I think what might work even better is if we take the zip tie and we snip it at an angle. Now, this is the smallest zip tie. I'd like to use one a little stronger, but it probably won't fit in the ring groove. So I snipped it at just a bit of an angle, so hopefully it'll scrape the carbon a little bit better. 
I can actually feel it, and you can just see that big pile of carbon that flew off. I can feel it scraping the carbon pretty well here. Let's see how much we're getting, getting off of this one. I like using things like plastic too because there's no risk of damaging the metal in any way. Actually grabbed a different zip tie, clipped clipped the end at an angle so it's got a sharp point, and then folded it over to try and get a little bit more leverage on it. So you can see that actually worked pretty good. Let's run the tool through and see if we get any more than we already got. So a tiny bit more, not really that much. So I actually think I like the zip tie method a whole lot better. I do have one size bigger on the zip tie. Let's cut that and see if it fits. So even the biggest zip tie I have fits pretty well. So we got a tiny bit more. There's a little bit of carbon on the tip of the zip tie. It looks like it got almost everything off of there. All right, I'm pleased with that. Let's do the second ring. Since this is a bit of a wider groove, it may take a little bit longer because we're actually going to have to move the zip tie throughout the groove. Let's see, oh, there was a big chunk. And that's really what I'm aiming to get out, these big, big, big pieces, or at least covered, up, covered more surface area. So time for some high speed action. Let's get the rest of these cleaned up. Next, we're going to put the pistons back together. Thankfully, I did a good job of labeling everything, so it should go back together pretty smooth. If you remember way back when, and I, I made sure to talk about the importance of marking everything and labeling it as we disassembled it, because that was gonna make it a ton easier to go back together. But for some reason, if you don't on the VRs, this raised part faces inside into the engine, so the pistons actually sit like this in the engine which makes it a little bit easier. Also, I labeled which way the connecting rods went, so this arrow faces forward, which means that the piston's gonna go together like this, forward and then on the inside. I also labeled it on which side I took the clip off of, so that'll make it a little easier as well. Go ahead and put some assembly paste on the bearings and the piston. We don't really wanna put anything together dry especially because it's not like we're going to be putting this together tonight, right? It's still going to sit for a little while while we finish building the block, finish building the head, and then get everything put back together. There are certain designs that require you to press 
the uh, wrist pin in, these actually just push right in. It's super easy. trick is to just line it up, press it all the way in, and then it just goes right in. Now you may have to tap this with a hammer a little bit. Notice that I'm actually working on a piece of wood that's a little bit softer. In case I do need to hit it with a hammer, it won't risk doing any damage to the piston. If you do need a hammer, wood, brass, plastic all work really well for this. Next, we're gonna put the retaining clip in for the wrist pin. This is actually the most challenging part. These are new clips, uh, so they're really, really tight. So the way I typically do these is there's a small groove that the clip sits in, and I actually get one edge into the groove and then just kind of work my way around. This can be pretty difficult. You wanna make sure you're wearing safety glasses because that spring can pop right out pretty easily. with the help of a pocket screwdriver. And just work our way around. And we're in. Now that just peel a little tiny bit of the coating off right there, that won't be a problem in any way, shape, or form. Most importantly, you wanna do an inspection. Make sure that the clip is sitting all the way in that groove on the piston. You can take it, you can move the wrist pin back and forth, make sure nothing's really, really loose, no lateral play, no side to side play, anything like that. Do one more quick check. Make sure that we put our piston back together correctly inside. This will face the inside of the engine and this faces the front. So cylinder three is good to go. Let's go ahead and do the rest of them in high speed. All right, so there you have it. Our pistons are assembled, ready for ringage, ready to go back in the engine. Before we put the rings on the pistons though, we need to make sure that the ring end gap is correct. I'll be doing the ring end gap and installing the rings in a different video for you guys, so be on the lookout for that. There are a few tools that you really wanna have in order to set this ring gap. I don't have those tools right now. I'm gonna get them on loan from a local tuning shop so that we can set the ring end gap so that we can put them on the pistons and then we're just gonna go ahead and drop them all right into the engine, which I'm pumped, I'm super pumped about. So be on the lookout for that. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Questions, comments, you know what to do. If you like the video, thumbs up. I always appreciate that. Don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube or over on the blog at humblemechanic.com. If you want exclusive content, discounts you can't get anywhere else, as well as VW Audi training manuals from the classes that we teach, please check out the crew membership program, link down in the description. Great way to make some money back, get awesome discounts, as well as help support the show and learn some things from the Audi VW training manuals. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, of course, Snapchat. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I love you, and I'll see you next time.